Welcome to Season 3 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big topics into small bites. I'm your host, Dr. Amy Newsel, and I'm joined by my dear friend, women's health and fertility expert, naturopathic physician, Kate Namas, to break down infertility, hormones, and the whole baby-making shebang. This week, let's dive a bit deeper into fad diets and also disordered eating around fertility. So that brings us to every fad diet out there, right? Keto, paleo, Hold30, intermittent fasting, potato diet, South Beach. I mean, you name it. There's a new one every freaking five minutes. Kate, what are your thoughts on these for pregnancy preparation? Good question. In my 15 years as an ND, I have found that we as a profession attract women with both diagnosed and undiagnosed disordered eating habits, eating disorders, and body dysmorphia, because we do have expertise and focus on lifestyle habits, such as dietary changes and exercise. Also, because I work with menstrual issues like endometriosis or PCOS, I'm also seeing a higher percentage of women with both undiagnosed and diagnosed mood disorders. So I wanna be a safe place for these women to get the fertility help they need. And I also want to refer them to the appropriate healthcare providers for these other issues. I don't want to encourage restricting and binging by giving any calorie limitations. And I really haven't seen these fad diet work, fad fad diets work. Or I don't want to worsen mood swings through strict or stringent diets that dysregulate blood sugar or exercise recommendations that encourage over-exercising. I've seen a new fad diet come out almost every year, as I'm sure you have, and I find that they are helpful to a few. They work really well for some person but encourage disordered eating, encourage capitalism, and rarely are evidence-based. And at their worst, they're rigid, restrictive, and punishing. At their best, they are helpful as a guide in circumstances with certain diagnoses for certain timeframes. But for the preconception and pregnancy preparation period, I would absolutely focus on the nutrition guidelines we've given and not on restrictive eating of any type. Amen. I completely agree. I mean, so often fad diets catch on, right? They're interesting because they're different, but very rarely do they give you a balanced method of eating to carry forward long term, right? Which brings us, unfortunately, to disordered eating. There are three major categories of eating disorders, and of course, lots of minutia within these, but they are anorexia nervosa, in which body image is very distorted and starvation or extreme calorie restriction is used to achieve more of an ideal, quote unquote, often in combination with extreme levels of physical activity. Sometimes I see that really only with extreme levels of physical activity and a somewhat normal or maybe lower calorie diet. Bulimia nervosa, which is the second category here, in which a person goes through cycles of binge eating and purging that might include vomiting or using laxatives or enemas or some other thing. Uh, I also think intermittent fasting can sometimes fall into this category where a person will binge and then intermittent fast because it's healthy. Uh, The third category is avoidant or restrictive food intake disorder, in which a person eats an extremely limited diet, often only five to 10 foods, usually for health reasons, but also just due to pickiness or food avoidance. And it can also include orthorexia, which is usually the, these are the five healthy foods. So that's all I'm going to eat ever. These are all very serious conditions. And I do think it's best to work with a healthcare professional who specializes in this area of work. Um, For fertility, they can have a wide range of consequences, including undernourishment and overt vitamin and mineral deficiencies, not to mention the toll is these conditions can take on mental health. Kate, what are your thoughts on this? Yes, I agree with everything that you said. And I have frequently seen women not ovulating because of these things you've just mentioned. Um, And I am very careful to not give restrictive dietary advice or a lot of monitoring about their exercise and eating habits. So as a clinician, screening is important because these eating disorders are often undetected and untreated. So I'm referring out and then modifying my lifestyle style habits 
Mm -hmm. lifestyle habit suggestions as warranted. Um, and I'm often re referring to um, therapists who specialize in these particular things we've talked about, whether it's mood disorders or eating disorders. Um, and we're having a really open, honest conversation. Oftentimes, one of the things that happens is the clients will say, this was in the past, you know, maybe in their late teens, and I haven't had any issues with it in years. For me, as a naturopath in a sensitive topic about talking about nutrition and exercise and diet, I'm still very considerate and communicative about it and checking in on a regular basis. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's great advice. So what we're saying, basically, if you're trying to get pregnant, fad diet is probably not the way to go. What we're looking for is a really balanced, nutritionally dense diet that will keep you within your BMI ranges and try to trend a little to the higher side of the BMI, um, which is part of why disordered eating can be so detrimental to pregnancy, because a lot of those women trend to the lower side of BMI or even are underweight. Um, make sure you're getting lots and lots of good healthy fats. You need good fats to build a healthy baby. Um, Dr. Kate, can you think of anything to add? Yep, just minimize your caffeine intake, take out the alcohol, and move your body in a way that feels good and enjoyable. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for your expertise and also for the obvious care and consideration that you put into handling clients with eating disorders. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening today and sharing your time with us. If you like this show, please follow and maybe even leave a review. Or like and subscribe if you happen to be watching on YouTube. Visit namesnd.com -E or to healthwiththat.com for more information about Drs. Kate and me, Dr. Amy.